Got it? All right. Well, thanks for having us. My name is Glenn Frazier, and Ken Yusei is in the back of the room. He's our, our local sales manager for Dialyte Products. Um, so we are an Encompass partner, and we're the only lighting company that is an Encompass partner. And a lot of you might even be more of the uh, PLC, the controls people, and you're kind of wondering why lighting really fits in. So we'll show you that here in a moment. Uh, what I'd like to do is go through our um, controls and explain a little bit more in depth of how it works and how we put it together and why you'd want to sell it. I will start off with one slide though of products in case you're really not familiar with Dialyte. So we are the industrial leader of LED lighting. That's all we do is industrial. That's all we do is LED. It's all we've ever done. So we've never done the old HIDs, the high pressure sodium lighting. We started and we're the first ones really out there with the white lighting for industrial. That's why we've got such a nice market space going with it. And we've really been known for the hot, dirty, nasty, robust lights. Most of them are all like the one we have here is our, our mainstay. You see it everywhere. It's ones that are high bay lights that are all waterproof, you know, NEMA 4X, IP66, kind of out of the box. We can do class one div one, class one div two. So we can do all the classified if needed. That's really almost all the lights up there, whether it's the area lights, the linears, and the low bays. And that high bay goes up to 72,000 lumens. So that's like 100 foot height to so really light up your facility. We do have a new light out that is the that light medium duty is called the Reliant. And that's actually is, it is more a trocker style. It's really more for replacing fluorescence. So it's gonna be more in that light, you know, assembly warehousing type thing where it's gonna be dry. It's, it's certainly not a sealed unit like the other units are, but it's be able to, be able to do that because from an industrial standpoint, we could always do most of the areas, but sometimes they have warehouses and parts that we couldn't compete because you'd overkill with some of the other lights. So we have a nice lighting for that. Now the controls we're gonna be talking about, will handle all of those high bays. So all those, the top two and the left and the bottom and the low bay also. So those have controls now, the other ones will start getting those in the future. All right. But with our lights, just to give you in case you're not aware, it's like I said, we're robust 10 year warranties. They're gonna last forever, you put it up there. We're known for that, for surviving. And if there is a failure, we just take care of it for you. So it's, it's more, it, actually we fit with Rockwell very well because it's very, you know, the, the value props with a Rockwell, you have for Rockwell the same with us. So it fits really well with the, the whole scheme. But with that, we'll jump into controls. So I'm not gonna go through all this and read this, but it was a press release. But really those first things in orange, we wanna maximize plant safety, productivity, and energy efficiency. So usually when you're talking about LED lighting, we're going out to sell it and we're talking about energy efficiency and that's usually the biggest thing, low cost or saving, saving money with uh, whether it's longevity, low maintenance. Um, but the fact that now we can connect to Rockwell, you're gonna see some safety and productivity improvements, which are new values or different values that you, can, you can't really get with anybody else because nobody else connects to Rockwell. So what we have is uh, our Gateway. So, for those of you on the phone, we do have some demos here. I'm, I'll point to, but uh, on the screen there, the gateway on the bottom. This talks to all the light fixtures. So, it talks 802.15, which is different than your usual 802.11, which is your home routers or most of the wireless for for Ethernet. 802.15. What's different? It's a mesh. So that means you'll see how this gateway is talking to the lights. It might talk to the first one and then that next light will talk to the next one and talk to the next one. So on the bottom of the screen, it says they have to be about a hundred feet apart or that the, no fixture should be more than hundred feet from something else. But now with that gateway, I can have in the corner of the room and talk to a light that's a thousand feet away because it'll just hop and catch different lights and bring the data back. So it's a, it's a mesh and it's nice, it's self healing. So if somewhere in the line, one of those fixtures failed, it would just reroute itself and route around and get the information back to the, back to the gateway. So it's always gonna work. And if there's ever some kind of a failure, so say the gateway failed and the communication died, all the lights would just go to 100%. So just be honest, you're never gonna get to a situation where the lights fail off because of control. It's always gonna be safe to go on. We also have multiple channels. So it's 2.4 gigahertz we're operating on, which is an open frequency with a lot of, a uh, lot of, um, Competitors or a lot of, or not competitors, but a lot of systems use that. But we allow you to change up to 14 channels right around that 2.4 so you can find an area who, if there's a lot of traffic, you can go to something that's a little lighter. And when we say simple, this is, this is really, really dirt simple. And I say, I can show you in five minutes and you'd be an expert. 
I really mean that. It's really incredibly intuitive and dirt simple, and I'll show you some things about that. But there's no special software. It's just open up your web browser, and it's IP-based. You go in there, and you work on it. So you're not downloading special software, upgrading software, or anything like that. Now, those, each gateway does 120 nodes. That's fixtures and sensors. If you have more than that, then you'll need more gateways. So if you have 200 lights in a room, say, you need two gateways. Now, that could be fine. You don't have to connect them together. You can have two separate IP addresses, and you go and talk to the lights, but they'll be in their own separate groups. They can't talk between the two. If you want them all to be in one big group, you have what we call the down, the bottom one's called our enterprise server. And now you have one IP address and you actually will talk to all those and you really don't worry about the gateways anymore. They're just kind of more of a pass through. Um, with that, then you have one IP address, but then you can connect all your lights. If you have a thousand lights in a room, you can have them all in one big group if you want. You have one button to dim them all to 50%, just with one button. So it makes it very simple. The only other difference with it, I mean, it's the software is slightly different. It's more icon based, but it, it's almost meaningless because they're both very simple. It does have reporting capability. So I'll show you some reports because, so if you really want these reports, this the enterprise server is what you need. So we'll jump into some of the features. So basically the fe features you'll find on both the systems are gonna be everything except the reports that's only in the enterprise server, but group the lights, dim them, schedule them, put them on any kind of schedule you want. Sensors, we have daylight harvesting sensors, which are sensors that will if you have any kind of sunlight, skylights, it'll actually dim the lights automatically to balance the light based on sunlight to save more energy. And of course, occupancy sensors, you can put anywhere and control any of the lights any way you want, and obviously on off control. So let's kind of jump past that, get into each one. So grouping, what, what really people love about our system is it's just very flexible. So once you put the lights up, you put them in groups, you can like say the, uh, say the big yellow block, you have a, occupancy sensor on there to turn on when people walk in. The next day you walk in and say, you know, I really want the next row of lights to be added to that. It'll take you three minutes to go in the software and add those lights to that group and you're done. If you have a machine and they decide to move it next year to change the way the plant moves, to change the way the lights work, it's just, it's just dirt simple. Once everything's in this software, it's all it is, it's software. You move the pieces and make, it, make the interconnections you want. But as Incredibly dirt simple. When I say it's intuitive, it's nice because you might set it up and run. You don't have to touch it for six months, but then you got to go back into it. You just jump in and you'll be able to figure it out without actually opening up a manual. Scheduling, you can set up any kind of schedules. You have multiple schedules. You can have schedules like this one shows weekdays or Tuesday to Saturday for some reason. You can have Monday to Sunday. You can have different schedules. You have a different schedule for each group if you want. So there's multiple ways to do it. You have 10 groups. You can have different schedules on all 10 groups if that's the way you want to do it. And it's to add it, to, to make it, all you do is you, there's an add button at the top. You hit the add and you say, I want at eight o'clock for 50% and it'll pop on the screen. It'll draw that little map for you. So you just keep, it'll keep drawing it and show you exactly what it's going to look. And then actually when you add it to a group, it'll show you all seven days and it'll show you what it looks like. And then you can see if you made a mistake or maybe you really want to operate a little bit different on a certain day. So again, we say it's simple. It truly is about as simple as you can get. Now the reporting that's in the enterprise server, there are four different reports you can get out of this. Expense and savings, historical real time and download. And the two on the outside are probably the most interesting, what people will find the most value. So we'll start with the, probably the most interesting ones, the expense and savings. So this report, you can set up, you'll see at the bottom it says legacy configuration. You can actually put the data for what you had in there. So if you're placing 100,000 uh, watt HID lights, you put those in, put what days are on. You can add different rows if you have different types or different schedules for them. But you put the cost of energy in there. And then what it's going to do, in this case, this is a simple one, but it, it's going to put those orange bars. It'll show you how much energy they were burning for each of those days. And it's going to go back for the last 28 days. And then you'll see the blue bars, that's actually the real time energy out of every single light. We take that energy, aggregate it, and then we plot it. So you'll see the energy difference you're saving. And it'll actually, the green uh, line up there, that's the dollars you're saving. So on the left, it'll give you the report, here's how many dollars you're saving with it. It'll even give you CO2 savings. So what's great about this is twofold. One, now it gives you a reason to go talk to some of your executives. Especially if you talk to any Fortune 500 company, you go online, they have their annual report, I guarantee you they have something about sustainability. Sometimes they have their own separate report all on sustainability. 
that means there's probably a director of VP of sustainability and they're trying to trying to do things and they're trying to find data to put in the in the reports this could be something for this so this will actually show you your ROI it doesn't bring in your maintenance savings of course but from your energy savings you can now see is it doing exactly what we told you it was going to do and it and shows up we just did a site for I'll show you an example we did 913 lights and it was spot on for what we said your energy savings is going to be this is now showing it pictorially what's also nice though is engineers love it because engineers love to go in there and tinker with things you can optimize. So when you look at, you could look at your data and say, hey, in March, I just spent $20,000 of electricity for my lighting. Now you can maybe make changes, change your schedule, put more occupancy sensors in there, maybe dim lights in certain areas. And then you just monitor and say, okay, in April, I just saved $2,000 based on just those changes I made and optimize what plant safety and what, you know, what the requirements are for the personnel and how, many, you know, how much energy you can save. So it's a nice tool. The next two are those two in the middle. One is historical. You put in any date range, it'll show you exactly how much energy you spent in each of those days. The bottom is real time. It'll actually roll, scroll across the screen and show you each group. So you kind of see at the bottom, there's different groups and they'll be stacked. You can actually turn them off. So say you wanted to see the group over machine A, how are the energies being spent right now or being burned? You can turn everything else off and just watch that one. So it's kind of interesting. But then the last one is also, I think probably the most useful um, it's actually a download. So you go in your, you just go into the software and say, I want to see everything from January 1st to May 1st. Hit download and it'll give you a CSV file. Across every column is a, a light fixture. Every row is every 15 minutes. It gives you the exact power of those fixtures. So now you can look at that, bring it into Excel, do whatever you want to do, put plots, graph it out. But if it's showing like this case, the ones that are 212, those are the maximum power in those. One on the very left says 0.6. So if it's something like one watt, somewhere around there, that means the light is on and talking, communicating properly, but somebody, we commanded it to be off. So it's actually not, it's off, but talking properly. If you see zero, that means something's wrong. Either somebody flipped the circuit breaker and they just turned the light off. It's not communicating properly, failed, whatever. You know, so now you can at least see what's going on. But then you can also watch, is it following the schedules you put on there? Are there occupancy sensors or people in areas maybe they shouldn't be in in the middle of the night? Or maybe you gotta adjust the lighting because people are working in areas you didn't think they were. But you can see, you really get a nice snapshot of what your whole facility is doing and maybe you have to make adjustments on that. So it's a nice tool, our engineers do it because when we're doing tests, they say, is it following the schedules we asked? Is it doing what we want? So it's a nice tool. And then we have a commissioning tool. So in the gateway, so we say it's very simple, but it, uh, it does have a tool or it's just a wizard. So you start it up and you hit next, next, and it'll tell you, it'll just walk you through to set it up. So if you're the first time ever doing this, all you have to do is log in, go to this tool, select the tool, and then start hitting next, do exactly what it says. The first thing it'll do is discover devices. So when you first start a system up, each, each light is individually addressable, obviously, so we can control them all. You hit discover and it'll go out and it'll find all the lights that aren't connected and it'll connect it to that gateway. And now they're in, you hit next, it'll analyze it and it'll start, you name them and you just go through it and get it all set up. And it makes it really about as dirt simple as you could possibly imagine. It's easy for me to say it's simple because obviously I work with it. But what I did as a test, I brought in six new fixtures from the factory, had them show up on our dock. I called a local contractor, said I need a guy to come in and install these lights for me and commission. So the only criteria is he's got to be, got to have a, bring his own laptop and be, know how to use it. So he sent a guy and to be fair, he had done some competitors, but he's never saw our fixtures before. And that's the result. He, uh, that was, I gave him a little sheet instruction saying six lights, name them one to six, group name X, and put a schedule to turn on at eight and off at five. And he went in there, he didn't realize there was a wizard. And of course I didn't tell him because I'm observing to see what he does. He actually followed along those steps perfectly, just intuitively. He's like, well, I should discover. He went through and did everything. Only once did he stop for about 30 seconds. I think it was around the schedule and he thought about it and he's like, and he went and did the right thing. So he had six lights connected, installed, everything set up, commissioned like in about 20 minutes. And you see, he said it was the easiest thing he's ever done. He was on the competitor. He said some of those were nightmares. So it is easy. And another, give you another anecdote. Um, I had gone out to, it was in Oregon to help this company set up their lights, 74 light system, and got them all set up, but they had a co-op helping, kind of in charge of it. 
trained them all up, even trained this other guy. But six months later, he calls me up, said, hey, Glenn, said the cop went back to school and I wasn't really listening. You know, how do I get in the system? So I said, well, as long as you didn't change the password, here's what it is. So I said, call me back if you had a question. Never heard back from him. He was able to just jump in there, figure it out, even though he didn't know what he was doing. He went in there, did exactly what he needed to do. It's, it was literally that simple. Now, if he just pulled the manual up, he would have saw the password and would have been fine too and probably never called me. Another nice tool you have is a network analysis tool. So once you get everything connected, this actually shows you exactly how all those lights in your ceiling are actually talking and connecting. As I said, it's a mesh. So in this case, the gateway happens to be talking to a device, a, a, a sensor, and then it looks like about a dozen lights are talking to that, and then there's another dozen or six or so lights talking to each one of those. Um, what's nice, this is dynamic. So every minute or so, I think you can select a refresh rate, but it'll refresh and you'll see them bounce around and change every once in a while. The dark line, if it's really thick line, that means it's relative good signal strength. If it's a little wispy line, like you see some on the right there, that means it's got a really poor signal and it's, so it'll probably jump and talk to something else because it's always looking for the strongest strength. Um, you can even hover over one of these and it'll actually show you a couple of pieces of data about how many watts it's burning and I think the signal strength right there. So it's a nice little tool. And one thing we observed, we are actually commissioned this. This was 72 light or 84 light fixtures in this massive facility. Those are five foot diameter steel pipes. And this crane would come and pick up two pipes at a time. And we just happened to be watching that, that uh, analysis tool. The crane came across and stopped right under these some of our light fixtures. And all of a sudden, you know, the big piece of metal, it's affecting the RF. So you saw the lights, they all just kind of re reattached to different lights and found different paths. There's no operational difference because it's the way it's set up. It's going to work properly. But they just decided to reassign themselves and find better paths because this big metal thing was in its way and affected it. So it was just kind of nice to see the actual tool work exactly, exactly how it should. All right, so that's how it works with our system if you just, just buy our system and don't do any connection to Rockwell. What we have done, though, is a few years ago we said, you know, we really want to start getting connected and be part of the factory and part of the machine, um, which is very different because most people, the lighting people, are not any, we're similar to the automation people at all. Um, but what we did, we came in, we actually have Ethernet IP, Profinet, and BACnet. But with Ethernet IP, we have what's called add-on profiles and add-on instructions. So if you're a PLC guy, you know, know what those are. The reason, uh, so we have add-on profiles. This is what's actually made us an Encompass partner. We said we want to be an Encompass partner. We want to have this simple connectivity. So we have all the right protocols, but you need the enterprise server. So the black box in the middle, the enterprise server is what does the change from Ethernet, which the Ethernet talks to all the gateways, but it goes to Ethernet IP then you can utilize your AOPs and AYs and get a seamless connection into the control logics and now the connected enterprise, you know, ecosphere of Rockwell. The question is, why would you do that? Here's a reason. So now you've got a machine, you've got some kind of a jam, your soup cans fall over. Now you can start blinking the light right over the problem, get people out there to fix it. Could be anything. Could have a web break on your paper machine and get people out there working on it. So now, once you're connected to logics, you're part of the machine, you're part of the process. So now you can use all the brains of that and start using your lights. One thing you can do, maybe you connect your fire system to the Rockwell. Now if you get an alarm, you can actually show lines of egress and blink exits and get people out. Um, conversely, if you have uh, you get an alarm in, if you have a tornado, show people where to go. I was actually talking to one of my old Rockwell friends about this and they said, you know what, uh, happened to be their office, but they said they had an alarm go off. Luckily it was a test, but they didn't know it. Half the people ran outside and half the people ran inside to the tornado thing. They weren't sure which one it was. So if you have lighting to help guide them and help, help, uh, help them with that situation, now all of a sudden it's a safety aspect, right? Of helping, helping the safety. Here's some examples. I'm not going to read them all, but uh, a couple of our real life examples. But um, you can dim the process. So if you saw us at Automation Fair, I think some of you did. This is one of the demos we show there. We actually have a machine running. When the machine's running, we automatically dim the lighting to 20% because you don't really need it while it's running. We had a safety camera, a Rockwell safety camera. If they broke that, the light started blinking. Person comes up, they do a proper lockout tag out electronically through Logix. The lights go to 100%, tell people, allow, allow them to go in because they know the machine is safe, they fix it. 
reset the machine, runs, automatically dims. So just that little 20 second demo shows exactly the power which can do. So it's safety, productivity, along with energy savings with it. But a couple other ones, um, actually change lights based on a product being produced. A lumber mill asked me, said, well, can I change the light level based on the lumber sending down the line? Of course, Logix knows exactly what it's sending down the line that very second. So you can change it to whatever you want. Um, steel mills, I've talked to a few of these where the train's coming in the platform and they're all wearing double hearing protection. You know, if they could actually blink the lights in the platform, let them know that there's a safety issue or safety concern, that's very, po you know, very powerful for them. Um, but anything else, you know, automatically increase lights for inspection, you know, raw materials running low, blink it to help get people out there. So again, that's that connectivity with Rockwell with control logics and compact logics. It's got to be studio, is a studio 5000 now? It's got to be studio 5000, not 500. But you can do anything. Uh, you have a vessel and it's getting over pressure, blink lights, warn people, get them out of the room. So anything you could possibly imagine, you can do now. So as we said, we have two add-on profiles and four add-on instructions. And for those of you who are not uh, programmers, bottom left, that's the tree in Studio 5000. You'll see Alan Bradley's PowerFlex drives and you'll see dial at lights. You can bring all that data in and do anything you want and control the lights. I said seamless. Um, got example code and everything up on the Rockwell site too. So you can jump up there, grab it and get you going. So. What we're looking at though is what else can we do? So we have what we call three layers. So the first one is just the connected lighting as I first talked about. So how our lights can be connected together and you control them. That second layer is integrated to control with Rockwell's logics. But now there's that third layer. What else could you do? So now you have this whole ceiling of lights. So you've got real estate, you've got power, and you've got communication. What else could you use those for in your factory? Could you hang an RFID sensor on some of the lights and start tracking your, your pallets and start tracking forklifts? Possible, that's something that was starting to gain some traction, is a little slowing off right now. Environmental apps is what we're looking at right now. Um, so what if you could take gas sensors, H2S sensors in a refinery and then wirelessly connect them to our lights and then if, there's a, if they have a gas leak, which is hugely dangerous, you can start blinking the lights right above the problem and show people not only where the problem is, but where it's the gas cloud's going so people can run the other way. Plus you can, can uh, send the signal back to the control house to come know where the problem is and you know how to fix the problem. So that's huge because right now what do they do? They look up for a wind sock from you know, 1800s technology to see which way the wind's blowing. So maybe we can help them out and do a little bit better than that. So again, you start doing things, especially refinery and safety, all of a sudden cost of the system comes, it's obviously important, but a little less important when you add different values it could be for. So that's, those are the types of things we're looking at next. So if you have some good idea what you could use, just let us know and we'll help you out. So just kind of recap a little bit on how to use it. Um, this is just when you're trying to put a system together. If you have under 120 lights and nodes, um, sensors, then you can get away with just one gateway. You don't get the reporting, but you can just do one simple gateway and get it up and running and it's easy. If you have more than that, so you have more than 120, we say up to 10,000 lights, once it's in software, it kind of doesn't really matter the enterprise server, it's this industrial computer, it'll start taking them in, you can really manipulate as much as you want. If you have more than that, and you want to have them all in one group, then you get the enterprise server and then you'll talk to that. And then if you want to connect to Rockwell, to the PLC, you do need the enterprise server, because again, that's what has the Ethernet IP adapter that does that conver conversion to talk. <laughs> so. We'll give you a success story. Um, actually, fairly recently, we just installed 913 lights. So those are new Reliant lights, so they're more of the rectangular. And but 850 of them actually had controls on them. The other ones we put other localized occupancy sensors. Um, well, some of them we're probably going to change to the to full control. But uh, we put them up there, got them all set up and running, and now they can literally sit at their desk and see how it's working. They're they're uh, energy guy and the energy purchasing guy who I worked on the system is in a different state. The, week, the next week he calls me up and I was at a conference and he said, hey Glenn, I'd like to see how this is working. I said, well, can you get online? He goes, yep, here's the IP address, jump on. And I gave him the uh, a password. I was about to show him how to get to that energy save. And he goes, oh, here it is, I got it. I found the report and he's just be able to jump in there and take a look at it and he was happy as a clam. So now he 
now the system that he just bought and paid for, now he can actually see how it's working. Plus everybody else who has access to it can see that. But some of the benefits of this, we actually were able to get the ROI under two years for full lighting and controls on it, which was pretty good. Their cost of energy was a little higher, which was helped with that. They can see all their reports. They actually, right away, we helped them get started and before we left, but because uh, they had their own PLC people, but we hooked them up to an HMI. They put an HMI down by the line because they, they have multiple lines that aren't always running. So they put one down so they can turn them on and off. And uh, especially, we automatically turn them off or down to 20%. They can start up and turn them on when they're going to maintain the machine or do whatever. So, so they right off the bat had it hooked up to the PLC and off and running. But from the benefits, their lighting, by changing it out, we were able to, it was about between 70 and 100% improvement of light on this work surface. We don't have a before and after here, but the before was a little dimmer and a lot shiny. You can actually see, see the glare on the floor. And then here, actually, the ceiling's even more lit just because of the reflect, reflectance off the floor. So better lighting, um, better color temperature, the evenness of across instead of fluorescence, you get some because they're all different ages, they're all different colors. So it was all perfect. Ten-year warranties with it. And their energy saving, $164,000 a year just in energy savings. And we were able to, with our graph, show them exactly that. They also had another 30 some thousand dollars of maintenance of how many light bulbs and ballasts they had to change every single year. So for them, like I said, a couple year uh, ROI was a perfect system. So in summary, you know, we're the world leader in industrial LED lighting. So we have great lights. That's what people sell most. So please look for those opportunities. But we have a superior control system. So all the capabilities, be able to turn them on, turn them on instantly, control any way you want, flexible or savings, but reduce maintenance. One thing I like to point out is now you start thinking, once you can dim lights, in fact, when people put our lights in and replace almost any other old technology and they have the controls, they dim the lights by 20 and 30% right off the bat. So they put it in and they go, boy, those are really nice and bright now. And you know what? We really don't need that much. So they can actually dim them by 20 or 30%. You could do that. And if you've got a dirty environment, what you could do instead of going out there and having to clean lights or something, you can actually Maybe every six months, raise it up 5%, raise it up 5%. And then maybe the third year, say, you know what, let's go out there and dust off the lights and get them all clean again and get going. So there's different options and different values you get that you don't really think about until you see those, you have those capabilities because no one ever had those capabilities. I've talked to, I've talked to a woman who had a paper machine. She goes, oh, we don't turn lights off above the machine. But you can, you could dim it. Well, no, we don't do that. About the third time she goes, well, you know what, nobody's really there. I guess we could, but they just never had that capability before. I mean, how many times you go by facilities and lights are blaring 100%, you know, 24 hours a day and they really don't need to do that. So even factories that are 24 seven, there are opportunities for, with, with controls. So, so look for those. So I'll stop with that. Um, I will show here for those on the phone, I do have a demo to show real quick. Um, basically it's the, our system with the Rockwell com Compact Logics, and we have a panel view, HMI. So what we're showing here is we put a nice fancy display because we use this for trade shows, more fancier than what a factory typically would use. But just simple, this is exactly what they're using at that, what I said for this production line. They uh, want to be able to control the lights. They're just going to put simple, uh, if you can see it and afterwards, you can come up and play with this. But is have little buttons to say, oh, I want to go to 75% and then you can change the lights all to 75% automatically. So in this case, I pushed a button and we have a light on the other side of the room. So it's controlling it wirelessly. Um, so you can change it anything you want. So now, it's, now it's in the Rockwell world. So it's the panel view, it's whatever you want to do. Do you want to have one button per group or maybe they'll have a whole thing and here's 10 groups, you click the group and now you can see the lights and change them anyway you want. In this case, we can actually hit the light on here and see the data for the lights. You can see how much energy it's burning. You can see its signal strength. You can see runtime of the lights. You can see everything and all the data that it has available for that. But again, that's an HMI thing. It's how you want to do it. We even have simulated a, uh, you know, I see that nice little yellow box. That's the Rockwell safety mat. So if you hit that, you can start blinking the light automatically and show people that, hey, you stepped on the mat and maybe there's a problem or maybe they opened up a, a gate, safety gate they shouldn't have opened up. But it lets people know that something's going on. So with that, any questions I can answer? You said a situation earlier where the pipe was above the factory and you can video it and you have a video. You said mm -hmm. the lights blinked? No, they didn't blink. The, operationally, nothing changed at all. 
what happened is, uh, here, I'll go back to that screen. But you said you could see the lights finding a different way. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't. So it's this. So you're watching, you're looking at how the lights are interconnecting, they're talking. So what happened when the crane came and stopped underneath the lights, it changed the RF. So some of these lights said, you know what, I can't really talk to this guy over here. I'm going to swap over and jump to another one. So on the screen, you saw their interconnectivity change, the communication path, but the light's perfectly fine. They're not going to change at all because they know what they're doing. Right. All settings always communication full right. We'll go to full. So how Well, I mean, I, I, had, I was talking to somebody yesterday. We had an example. They had some microwave machine they did, and they said they can't do any Wi-Fi in this building. I said, well, it's probably not a good solution then because it's too much. But we have very strong strength. So we say 100 feet, but we've actually tested more. I've personally watched a light, been able to connect to a light 300 feet away through a black wall. But we want to have it above that floor of the noise, and we don't know what's in a factory. We don't know how many cranes. I mean, one guy took one of my gateways and – put it in a steel cage. Like, well, that's not gonna work real well. It's a Faraday cage, you can't do that. But you're gonna have different things in every factory. So we have, the, we have a strong strength and the ability to change the channels to pick areas where you're gonna be better off. So it, it's been proven to work really, really nice in facilities. Great question, no. And the reason is, um, it's, a, it's a closed system. And it has to be from a safety or security standpoint. You know, we do not want to be responsible for somebody breaching somebody's factory. So we want to make it closed. Um, we're looking at being able to look with other partners that maybe want to connect into the system, but right now it's a closed system, so it's locked down and not breachable. Well, that's the factory's choice, how they want to do that. Like this last one I just did, they actually just went out and bought their own compact logics and put it separate to the machine. They'll be able to talk, but they want to do their own division of how they want to do it. It is only Ether and IP that it protocol, that's the only protocol that it talks, Ether and IP, is that? It's Ether and IP, we have Profinet and BACnet actually, but. Oh, okay. Right. So, Siemens people, which aren't in the room, could do it, I guess. Um, there is, we do BACnet for building automation control, which there's actually a system we work with called Tritium. Um, it's not, that hasn't really taken off. It's kind of a totally different animal. For the add-on profile, are there alarms built in for something abnormal happening? Um, would there be loss of notifications to the server? Yeah, we have standard alarms. It's a good question. We have standard alarms like, yeah, loss, dropped, we call it a drop device, a lost communication. We have um, sensors if our batteries are low. If, uh, um, if the alarm actually, I didn't mention there's an override. I think I did. If you hit the override, it'll turn all the lights that are connected at gateway to 100%. You'll get an alarm, and you'll, so you'll get an alert saying that. Like in front of the machine, there'll be a red light goes on and says that's hat in that case. Because so, sometimes lights will be on or say, hey, how come I can't control them? Well, somebody pushed the button. You got to be able to see that. I, actually, that one, it's IP66. It is not class one div two yet. Uh, there's a couple things we want to do to make it, but um, the light itself can be, you can get the class one div two version, not class one div one yet. Um, but I've done a class one div two plant. They were just able to put the controller in a separate room just nearby that they make the connection. So that hasn't, so far hasn't been sh shown to be an issue. Can't do class one div one yet though. And our sensors are not class one div two. That's uh, PIR sensors and classified areas are challenging. So we're looking at different ways to do that. There was a question online about, I think maybe you had said about a wireless button, but I think it might've been the panel view when you were demonstrating it, or did you mention a wireless button by any chance? A wireless switch to be able to control yeah. the lights? Um, we actually, we're working on that. We're working on a couple different things, um, which actually might answer the one question. Um, we're looking, working on a module that's kind of an IO module. So you can put a, your, any industrial switch, light switch on it if you want, call, call light switch, um, but also some IO so you can bring in sensors or maybe you can turn on some legacy lights or turn on some other lighting that Aren't, don't have wireless today, so it gives it an option to do those types of things and bring it into our system, basically. Okay. All right. Well, so anything else? Well, another question might have just popped up. Oh. Hey, going into 
was doing the side of it. You said it's close to proprietary for the communication for the wireless, right? Right. The routing path and so on. Slip into that. Mm -hmm. But it's based off of an open, like a Zigbee or. It's basically a Zigbee protocol. Right, correct. But it's got its own encryption and you things, so. Correct. It yeah, it's basically a, a Zigbee, like I said, the O211 protocol, but it's a, basically Zigbee without, you can't call it the trademark Zigbee, but it's basically the, the software stack that does that. Yeah. What was the other question? Was there another question? Oh, no, I was just saying, I think that was the answer. Uh, okay. So we'll give our, um, Again, online audience, feel free to chat in uh, a question if you got one. Um, Are there questions locally? Get in a minute or two. How, how difficult would it be to put an RTE in those bikes? An RTE? Temperature sensor light. Oh, temperature sensor and light. There's temperature in the light for itself, there's power supply, but it's, um, that's what we're looking at is can we add different sensors? Was the ones we're looking at, temperature, CO, and actually uh, H2S were the couple we're looking at. That'd be kind of nice, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to push to get that one feature in there right off the bat, but didn't have that one yet. Well, that's what we're known for, for those lights. Those are 149 F, and we do have some that we will classify and give you uh, at least a five-year warranty to go up to 180. 180. So we're known to survive. Actually, we'll put ours on areas, we'll, companies like steel mills and paper machines where it's really hot. They'll know it's not going to be warranted, but they'll put it there because we're the only ones that survive. Yeah, if you guys want to jump on the website and get in the catalog, you've noticed that we've got the best T rating. We're, we, we make probably the only LED fixture that it can burn for 24 hours and you can pick it up and handle it. Every, everything else you're going to lose is killing your hand. Yeah. And that's all uh, because of the way that we designed the fixtures. We use copper substrates underneath um, the LEDs to, to, to lower the junction temperatures internal to the fixture. You can look at the fixtures, they look, they look at the housings are giant heat sinks. We're very good at getting the heat out of these fixtures. And it's one of the things that's allowed us to provide a 10 year warranty on everything that we make. Yeah. With our custom power supplies. With, but with our custom power the other thing is we do our own optics. So for those in the room, you look at the light that's on. From the angle, you can barely tell it. It's not. There's no glare. You don't see anything. If that was any competitor, you would not be able to look in that corner right now. I guarantee you. Yeah, and that's that's also a byproduct of us being nothing but an LED lighting company. We realized early on that controlling the light produced by a fixture that's going to be multi-point light source. Now, which LEDs are you going from a single light source, and where you could use prismatic glass or or whatever. But since you've got so many uh, point sources of light inherent in any LED design, it's important that you control each one of those points. Which is why if you look at any of our fixtures, every LED is seated inside of a reflector, which means we can attain efficiency 98% or better. So every lumen created by that fixture will go to the work plane where it was designed to go and every fixture we make, if you can look at this fixture now, it's a 90 degree cutoff. So you're not gonna have what we call visual comfort probabilities, where you're getting stray light that overlaps at a 70 degree angle. And what that does for industry, like we've done tests versus our competitors for the same lumen package, we're literally double the foot candles on the floor because theirs are kind of flying around doing the ceiling and it's industrial factory. Most times we do have some uplighting capability in some, but most people don't really care about uplighting. It's kind of wasted energy at that point. Your battery's running low. <laughs> we made it just, uh -oh. in, just in the nick of time. Of With that, <laughs> so um, so what do we ask, especially if you're automation sales, you don't really sell lighting too often, hey, now's the time to start looking up and say, you know what, you don't have LED lights yet. We've now got an Encompass partner that we can bring in and, and connect to your Connect Enterprise and bring us in. We'll be glad to come out and take a look at it. And I think there's some services people here. Who's the IBE people? Is there somebody? That guy there, the IB. Let's get, if you don't have lighting on, there is a checkbox. There should be a checkbox in your IB. So when you're doing a just all base evaluation, have them look, do you have LED lights yet? Yes or no? And then that's something we can then go back and we can come help you walk in there, whether it's your lighting people or 
Ken's local, he'd love to come in and start talking about what the options are. Might just be a lighting sale, but it might be able to be a sale we can connect to Rockwell and add a lot more value. All right. Okay, well, um, no questions on the line, so we're gonna, right. uh, we'll close it out a little early today. So uh, appreciate our online audience as always joining us. And then for everyone in the room who came out today, uh, appreciate it as well. And to Glenn and Thanks. the Dialight team for, for sponsoring this. Um, so uh, any questions afterwards, uh, feel free to reach out to uh, your Reynolds account manager and uh, we'll be happy to help and we'll, we'll shut her down. And take some our rep read shorters in here too. So he's our, our representative locally here that can help us out anytime. So, all right, so anyone else can come up and play with it, come on up, we'll take a look and